All right, guys, I got two 10 foot sections of Upinor PEX. The blue pipe is three quarter inch. The red pipe is half inch. I'm curious to see how much water these hold. All right, Andrew, you ready? Yep. We're gonna go uh, red pipe first? We'll go half inch first. Okay, I got my thumb over it. All right, perfect. So Andrew's up there filling it up with some blue dyed water. Tell me when you're ready, it's looking good. All right, I see one air bubble coming up to you. Other than that, this pipe looks pretty full. We got a little four cup measuring cup down here. Comment below on how many, how many cups of water you think 10 feet a half inch pipe is. We'll see if you're right. I don't see any bubbles, it looks really full. All right, we're full. Okay, you ready? One, two, three, go. All right, what do we got? Where'd that land? We are, let's see, that is, oh, I'm on the wrong side. That's the ounces side. Looks to me like we are two, just shy of two cups. I'm one and two thirds cups. Let's see if you can see it on the camera there. There's one, there's one and a half. It's just shy of one and two thirds, about a cup and a half of water in the half inch pipe. Let's reset and see what the three quarter pipe will hold. Oh, I lost some! <laughs> Dang it! Beep! All right, take two, y'all. <laughs> I let that go a little too... Uh, I forgot that a 10-foot column of uh, water has a fair amount of uh, head on it, fair amount of pressure on it. So this time we'll, we'll see if I can keep that splash contained. Looking pretty good, Andrew. You full up there, brother? Almost. Let's see how we do here. I'll tell you the point of this in a second, but really we're uh, talking we, about. We are full, man. You're full? All right, guys, let's see what I can do here. I'm gonna try and not burst out of my thumb. That's better. I'm controlling it a little better this time. Oh yeah. Perfect, Andrew, I got it this time. Minus a splash or two, not bad. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Oh, I can see it right now. There's the three cup measurement right there. It is basically double. Going from a half inch pipe to a three quarter pipe, double the water volume. Let's use that knowledge and let's walk inside and talk about hot water delivery, how to bring it to your tap as fast as possible. Let's get going. All right, so where does this pipe size matter? Well, it doesn't really matter on the cold water delivery side, right? Who cares how long it takes to get cold water? You don't really know. Where it matters is on hot water delivery, and that size of pipe really makes a difference. How many times have you been outside of the shower, freezing cold and naked with your finger in the water, waiting for that water to heat up? In the meantime, you're just dumping beautiful, filtered, gorgeous water down the drain because it's not the right temperature. Now, water savings aside, I'm frustrated by the wait. I hate that wait, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute to get hot water. But we also waste a lot of fresh water. On the EPA website, it had something like 1.1 trillion gallons of water are wasted waiting for hot in American homes each year. So now let's look at that pipe size and how we might deliver hot water quicker to our houses. We basically learned that when we step up from a half inch pipe to a three quarter pipe, there's double the water volume. The same is true if we had a three eighths inch pipe here and we step from three eighths to half. And the same would be true if we went from three quarter to one. The one inch pipe is about double the volume of the three quarter. Now let's look at some plumbing delivery systems and talk about how they could deliver hot water faster. In my mind, one of the ones that comes up right away as a fast hot water delivery I think is a manifold system. Now I did a full system tour in a manifold job not too long ago, a year or two ago. And when you think about a manifold system, it's kind of like the way you wire a house. There's a panel box in the basement, this big tube, this manifold, that's usually a pretty thick diameter. And then from that tube, you've got all these little twigs that are usually half inch pecs running to each fixture location. And you would think that because it's the smaller diameter pipe, half inch pecs, that you would have very quick hot water delivery. But let's think about that. If you had short runs, let's say 50 pipe feet, well, that would only be seven and a half cups of water in that 50 feet of half inch pecs. 
So when you turn on your faucet, you've got to wait for seven and a half cups to go down the drain before it's hot. That's not too bad. Most faucets in America today are about 2.2 gallons per minute, which means we've got, uh, you know, maybe 15 seconds or so before that water gets hot. It's still a little long in my mind. That's still a little bit annoying. But what's really annoying about the manifold systems and why I really don't use them in my houses is the annoyance of, I just turned my faucet on, and now my wife comes into the bathroom five minutes later, and I've been shaving or getting hot water out, washing my hands. Now when she turns her faucet on just two feet from me, she also has to dump seven and a half cups of water down the drain before it actually gets hot. I know, by the way, that bullet that's down in the basement, that manifold itself, that's usually a pretty hunk and thick pipe. So there's a fair amount of cold in there that needs to get expelled before we even get to that little tiny pipe. Now, if we have longer runs too, let's say we have 100 pipe feet, that means it gets twice as annoying to have hot water at this faucet and then go to turn on the shower. And again, I gotta dump another 15 or 30 seconds of cold down the drain. So I've stayed away from manifold systems. I think they're frustrating the people and they end up wasting more water than you think even though you're using these lines. Now, I'm not to say that manifolds aren't good systems. I like that there's less fittings, that you can turn each individual branch off. There's lots of reasons why you might use it. And in a smaller house, it could work really well. But I find them really frustrating. Next up, let's talk about trunk and branch system. That's probably the majority of the way most houses in America are plumbed. I would say 90% of them. That's where you have usually something like this, a three-quarter line or maybe even a one-inch line. Plumbers are always worried about pressure callbacks running through the house and then you have a bunch of twigs. That's your branch and that's your, uh, or pardon me, that's your trunk and that's your branch or maybe even a twig which is a smaller pipe off of that. And those houses now have, if you don't have a recirc line anyways, all kinds of pipe in the way before I actually get to that fixture. I might have one inch pipe, three quarter inch pipe, a lot of it before I actually get there. So now instead of seven and a half cups, I might have, it's not unusual at a lot of houses, to wait for an entire minute outside the shower or longer before you actually get to that hot water. Remember, showers are usually 2.5 gallons per minute. So now we've got even more cups down the drain. At 2.2 gallons at your faucet, that's 35 cups per minute down the drain at your faucet. And I'd be willing to bet a lot of you watching this are waiting a full minute for that faucet to work. However, the beauty of the trunk and branch is once it's charged, once you turned on this faucet, usually the faucet next door, the shower in the same bathroom, they're all from that same trunk that now is charged. It's actually hot inside there. So now once I've got this fixture hot, that fixture, that fixture, the bathroom next door, those are usually hot as well. And that's the beauty of a trunk and branch system. The other nice thing about these is they can be retrofitted, even if you don't have a dedicated recirc line, they can be retrofitted to add one. In fact, that's what I did to my house 15 years ago when I remodeled. I put a Metlin demand pump, I'll put a link to those guys, where I basically moved the water from the hot line, dumped it into the cold line so that my furthest fixture would be hot. So you can kind of retrofit those. But in my mind, the system that I think makes the most sense and how I actually plumbed my house under construction is the Upanor Logic system. Now my friend, Gary Klein, who's a master at hot water delivery, he's written all kinds of articles, I'll link to some of them below, has a really good layout that basically is the Upanor Logic system, which says that if we do a racetrack of three quarter through the house, and then it really could be any type of pipe, but let's think about this, a three quarter line, a racetrack, and then every fixture that's off of that racetrack is going to be a twig of half inch or maybe even three eighths pipe. So once that racetrack is hot with a dedicated recirc loop, all we've got to do is branch out with a smaller pipe diameter. And then if we're hot here and we tee off that to get to a fixture, we can actually pipe a house so that you might lose one and a half cups or less of water down the drain before it's hot at any location in the house. And that's how I plumb this house. Now guys, stay tuned for a future video on this. I'm gonna make a full system tour of my house and how we plumbed it and some of the benefits of Upanor in particular. But the same type of plumbing could be used with copper, could be used with other flavors of PEX, CPVC, whatever. I'm really talking about the concept, not the actual brands here. I'm gonna to link to a bunch of Gary Klein articles below 
But ultimately, let's answer the question which the video poses. What is the best, and conversely, what's the worst system? The worst system is the one that you don't think about, that you just plumb the house without any thought for hot water delivery. You're worried only about pressure drop or callbacks because of pressure. And you wait and wait and wait and dump and dump and dump water down the drain until it gets hot. That's the worst system. The best system is the one that you think about ahead of time. And ideally, in my mind, the one that's going to dump less than a cup and a half of water down the drain before it gets hot at any fixture in the house. Hey guys, big thanks to my friend Gary Klein. I talked to Gary several times before I started piping this house about the layout and how I was going to do it. And in fact, Upinor did an engineered system on this house. And I'm going to get into that on my next video, but I'll put a link below if you're interested in having them engineer your house. But ultimately, think about this ahead of time, and I think you can design for your house with a little bit of forethought, a system that's not going to waste water, that's going to be plumbed really well without any problems, and you're going to get really hot delivery to all of those fixtures to your house without wasting water. And again, it's not just about the water savings, it's about that frustration of waiting. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.